out there in internet land of the TV world and we'll like to play land of the internet. Hello. Hessman, Hessman and the here. fuckers. Yeah. Another fat fucker here. Part, I believe part four of our yeah. Let's Drunkenly Play Katawa Shujo. It may be part four. It depends on how it, if I want to make an hour and a half long video because I don't know how long. Parts two and three were both pretty sizable. I would say so. So, I mean, I, don't, I, I could make an hour and a half video. It I, would go based on I acts. Lose, I lose file quality if I do that, though. Do you? A little bit. Well, much. whatever part it may be. Yeah. We're, we're back. We're back, yeah. We're in it. It's me. Balls deep. Fat fucks and Hessmans. Yeah. Let's playing the smash hit of visual novel decision-making gaming. Yeah. Katama Shoujo. And Shujo. I have to say, Shujo. pretty not impressed with the adult content. Yeah. So far. But you never know, it's early in the game. We were still. We're, this is, looks like it's going to be a long ass game. It looks to be that way. So let's get right into the thick of it. Wakes up feeling tired. Probably because yesterday itself was a very tiring day. Uh huh. Obvious obviousness is obviousness. Redundancy. Yes. On top of that, I woke up far earlier than necessary. After saying hi to Shizune and Misha, I start doing the work as instructed from the board. It already looks like today is going to be heavy. Heavy. I don't have a problem with that now, though. Shizune and Misha might jump on me trying to get an answer about whether or not I decided to join the student council, even if it's just one day. I wouldn't put it past them to try, and I don't have an answer for them if they do, so the situation is convenient for me. That's right. About ten minutes into class, Hanukkah walks in and takes a seat, but no one else looks at her. The teacher doesn't even comment on her wait Waitness. He does, however, stop us to say that we're going to break into groups again. Swag. I turn my head and say, Shizune and Misha are looking at me. Shizune waves me a smile and gives me an equal parts cute and menacing. And anyway, you can read it. This is a smile that says, we have you now. There is no escape. Ha. Uh -huh. I was like, we're together again. Yay, yay. One way in. One way out. <laughs> Misha leans sideways while Shizune pushes her desk closer to mine. There really is no escape now unless I were to jump through the window. Yep. Jumping out the window isn't the best option, sadly. I'm on the third floor. I like my legs. Uh -huh. Some of the people here seem to be really sort of lacking them. Yep. Blah. But that heart condition would play into uh, effect if you did fall from a great distance, though. I'm sure it would to some extent. What's wrong, He-Chan? Blah! Oh, He-Chan, have you been thinking about what you said yesterday? You said that you would think about joining the student council, didn't you? It's okay, he chan We were talking about it after you left, and it would be rude to expect you to already have an answer for us this early, right? Right? Ah, 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 ah. It looks like Fangs, seriously. It really looks like Fangs to me. Maybe she does it. Maybe that's her disability. She's a vampire. Oh, that would be really shitty. Yeah, really. I guess like so. me status. I'm so happy you two are able to have a laugh at my expense, and even more pleased to know that you both know how crazy the two of you can be. Yep. Now that's now that that's over, Shizune snaps back into serious mode and smacks the sign with the back of her hand in an overly dramatic and important way. When I actually look at this stuff, it's mostly just reading. In fact, there are only two problems. I almost want to say something about how her rushing is started seems a bit much, considering the small amount of work. In fact, Shizune probably knows how little there is and simply doesn't care. First one done. Yeah, it seemed like the work yeah. doesn't matter to her as much as the fact that there is work. The actual amount is unimportant. She approaches everything with the same level of ambition. While I'm reading, I let my eyes wander around the room and catch Hanako trying her hand at solving the problems. It looks like she's working alone. I can't remember seeing her working with other people before. Thinking back to how shy she is, it's understandable. Hey, that girl over there. Huh? Who, He-Chan? Yelling, I'm sure. <laughs> her, Hanako, over there. Does she always work alone? It's nice to know you work alone. <laughs> yeah. What? That's a uh, Silver, Silver Sun, Sun Pickups. Pickup. Yeah. yeah. I haven't listened to that band in a long time. I'm going to have to re listen. They're good. They're so good. They're fantastic. They played a free show here recently. Did you know that? I know, but the tickets were incredibly hard to get, as well yeah. as I believe it was a 21 plus show, so I would have been yep. uh, not allowed. <clears throat> and I guess saying that now, I freely admit to YouTube that I've been breaking the law for every video we've ever made. Yep. But. Fuck em. Who really... I mean, I'm fucking 20. I should be able to drink. Should I not? I think so. I, mean, I feel like that should be an okay thing. If you're asking my personal opinion, you should be able to drink at zero. From womb till end. No, no, death. of course I agree. Again, with this extremist stuff we talked about earlier. But yeah. I think that there shouldn't be an age for drinking. However, 20 is ridiculous. 
to expect a 20 year old to not drink. Especially considering that you're not even that far away from turning 21. Especially in a state where the prices for liquor is so low. Mm hmm. I mean, ridiculous. Compared to Kansas, holy shit. Yeah. Compared, compared to the fact that there are dry counties in Kansas. Compared to really any other state as far as taxes go. Yeah, pretty much. We're the cigarette and tobacco haven. Yeah. Which is great for me. Uh huh. Because I acknowledge in both of those. But we have legalized pot. And rooms and DMT. We're actually very <clears> close. <throat> we're very close to having recreational uh, legalization in Missouri. Yeah, I'm, I'm rooting for it. Uh, of course, there are tons of asshole Republican assholes that are going to blockade it. But you are still a red state, technically. No, we are. We actually are. But, uh, but it was only because of Obama. Yeah. You know what I mean? Obama yeah. was what made us a red state, really. Yeah. Usually, St. Louis and Kansas City have a full swing on, like, a presidential-style election. Yeah, no. But when it comes to a, a black politician, the people here hate uh, minorities. So they. I understand that, but, man. You understand to, racism? I do. I don't think I agree with it. I understand where it comes from. Born in Missouri. Okay. I, I can see that. Understanding racism and agreeing with it are two different things. Absolutely. But the thing is, compared to fucking Romney? I know. I, uh, compared to Romney, a Mormon. This is so... He used to shoot Mormons on sight. This is so not at all relevant right now. However, let's be real. If you still vote Republican in 2013, what the fuck is wrong with you? In well, fact, if you if, still vote Democrat or Republican in 2013, what the fuck's wrong with you? I can understand Republicans. Don't, or, I mean, I can understand, I can understand Republicans, too. Fucking burn the world. I can understand, I can understand Democrats... Because it's it's the Democrats have the lesser of two evils kind of view, viewpoint on the American political system. No, to some people, huh? To some people. What do you mean to some people? Some people think the Republicans are the lesser of two evils. Some people think the Republicans are great, and against people think the Democrats are great. Yeah, but I'm, what I'm saying is, if you're a Republican, even if you feel the Republicans are the lesser of two evils, you know you're wrong. First of all, <laughs> okay, well, fair enough. There's you're also wrong if you think the Democrats are the lesser of two evils. However, myself. Looking at the way the political system is set up in this country, I can understand why a person would think to themselves, well, you know, I don't actually like the money corruption and influence in this system. However, I don't, like, want a total police state, so I'm not going to vote Republican. You know what I mean? All right, well, fair enough. Do you feel sorry for her because she's alone? <laughs> Transitioning right back. I was just thinking that maybe she could work with us or something. Hmm. No, I think that would be a good idea, He Chan. We want you all to ourselves. To see where I love us. Yeah. Look at them, they're so disconcerted. That is the only time she has to smile in the entire game. <laughs> she is, like, deeply concerned uh, by this. She wants... You want to work with her? Oh shit, she has a facial herself. scar. Yeah, really. Fucking status here, man. I'm the fucking school president. I can't have that shit. That's right. Why not? She Chan wouldn't get along with her. Why? Misha shuffles around the question, letting out a laugh that sounds very strange. It's nervous, but still has that lifting up and down quality present in everything she says. Just because, he chan By now, Shizune has noticed our conversation, and makes me realize again how Misha has been signing everything she has been saying this whole time. Yep. Yeah. Wow, unhappy. Judging. What, Shi Chen, the friend of the uh, of the friend of my enemy is my enemy? That sounds so harsh. I'm not gonna say that. He said it anyway. I know, Shi Chen, it's fine if you over here. <laughs> wow. I wonder if this is Misha's way of keeping things fair, since without her I wouldn't be able to understand the things Shizune is saying, and vice versa. Is it also why she signs all the time so there's never a conversation Shizune will be left out of? Bleh. Anyway, we should start on the problems now, Hee Chan. Doodly doo. We finished with time to spare, of course, and I decided to ask if there are any alternatives to the cafeteria, as frankly, the food so far has been subpar. Swag. This sends Suzune and Mishu arguing and bound themselves about their favorite restaurants. All of them are downtown, so I don't think we have time to go all the way out there. And what about the bill? Yeah. Are they arguing just for the fun of it? Well, they are in student council. Maybe. They seem to be so distracted by it that they don't even notice the start of the actual lunch break. Yes, yeah, student council. Yeah. Never been a student council, so I don't know anything, actually. Well, uh, I'll give you a hint. It's nothing like what you would think. 
It's just literally a bunch of bullshit, at least in my experience. It may be very different from other schools. Yeah. But in my experience, it's a, it's a bunch of largely... I, I would say vast majority percentage wise are people who are upper middle class yeah and would be perceived as like if we had to break it down into like high school stereotypes they would be like the clique of the popular kids mm-hmm. so it mainly just revolves around them talking about popular kids stuff and how great it is to be a popular kid and how great it is to be having friends and being in the clique of the popular kids and how great it is to have a car and to be able to drive and and also not even acknowledging that there are people that aren't as privileged as you economically. Yeah. Again, this is just my school. So, you know, I sat Private in... Private school mentality, by the way. Yeah, no, big time. But you have to take into consideration the area we're in. Right. I, uh, I sat in on one of the meetings and thinking that it was going to be like... A town hall kind of thing? Yeah, I think it was going to be like a town hall, like, let's discuss policy in the school here. Like, let's make our voices be heard, and it pretty much, de- like, developed, like, developed into, like, the teacher gossiping with the students about bullshit rumors that were going on amongst other students who were not in the clique. You know what I mean? And there was no discussion of, like, school policy. There was no discussion of anything other than, like, oh, my God, this person is pregnant, and, oh, my God, can you believe this person said this, said uh, this... Such and and not not just the girls, the boys right. as well. No, I know. You know, I've seen their types. Yes, if you fuck can, them. yeah, fuck them. That's what I'm saying. Emo for life. <laughs> X X X hearts 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 X X slash slash dagger. Cut myself at night. Yeah. Why even wait till night? You shut that shit off. <laughs> you can't get a good picture at night. You're right. You can't get a good picture at night. I look over my shoulder towards the back of the classroom, bleeding from the wrists. She seems to be studying her notes from a previous class. It's an odd sight. Everyone else in the class is busying themselves with the lunch break. Socializing, gossiping, rearranging desks. <laughs> yep. Uh, okay. The ones with the actual box lunches mixing and chatting like everyone else, only interrupted by shout, short bouts of eating. But when I watch Hanako, it feels as though I'm the only one who can see her, almost as if she was invisible, sort of hiding in plain sight. Dude, that's, I gotta say, that's a super valuable skill to have. Hiding in plain sight? Yeah. Super valuable. I love it. I wouldn't know. I am a large person, so I tend to be seen. Doesn't matter. It's all about having nondescript attitudes and behaviors. Mm, I have none. Being unobtrusive. I lack that ability. In fact, I'm very abtrusive in most social situations. That's true. Getting into the thick of it. That's just my nature, though. You're the courage, not the way. I'm the shit, not the diarrhea. Alright, that works too. You'll notice. Is she being bullied? Is she isolating herself from the rest of the class? On her own accord? Maybe she's a pariah. Perhaps. I see her, ew, this guy's busting down on the walls. Ooh, another Coming vocab in. term for the Let's Play. Pariah. Yeah. Everyone Google Pariah. I know the definition, but... Good song by Dredge, by the way, also. Oh, yeah. I guess Dredge is still a band, aren't they? Yeah. I always forget they are. Killing it, still. I mean, they're not yeah. They're not quite as artsy farts as they used to be, and I really like that quality about yeah. them. But they're still damn good. Pariah, though. That's a word I have... Honestly, I don't think I've ever heard spoken in real life. Ah, well, the, you know what happens. It's a night for newness. Yeah. By the way, doing all of these in one long marathon, so I'm, like, slouched way over in my chair because I can't <laughs> really support myself. Yes. I see her look over her shoulder towards the classroom's rear door. Exit only above. Ah. Uh-huh. Come to think of it, she hasn't turned to pay since I started watching her. I guess she's waiting for someone. I do what I always do, and I don't know what to do. Like now. I've already started on one of the books I borrowed yesterday and took it with me to school to fill the empty moments between classes. I find the page that I creased the corner of to mark the spot I left yesterday night and pick up from there. Misha and Suzune are still arguing heatedly, probably talking about restaurants still. If I join them, I just get caught up in that or worse, get grilled about joining the student council. Misha isn't speaking a lot since there, isn't no, since there is nobody who need to hear what they are talking about. Why does she tend to sign those... Sign things even when Shizune doesn't need to understand what's being said, or even more strange when Shizune is not around at all. What a non-conflict of habits. Probably just only practice with Shizune because they're both in student council and nobody else is there. Yeah, really. I would say just practice, probably. Yeah. 
I mean, Miss does that occasionally. Still does it to an extent. Signs things. Yeah. If I had to, like... She's if, not deaf, by the way. Just no <laughs> sign language. If my friend was deaf and I had to be the translator, I'd probably sign a lot just unnecessarily just so I could have practice with it. Yep. I find it hard to focus on the book, and besides, the lunch break beckons me to leave the dullness of the classroom. I do so, heading down for the cafeteria, leaving everything I was interested in behind. Misa and Shizune, having come to the conclusion of one kind or another, following my wake, though still talking in their animated fashion. Okay, so fine, I was wrong, whatever. Just around the corner of the hallway, something hits me in the chest with the force of a runaway train. A runaway train. <laughs> it's, a, it's a runaway train. Ouch! Whoa. Hey. Opening my eyes, I see a pair of saucer-like green eyes staring up at me as the camera slowly zooms out to reveal the rest of this person's blouse area. I was... I, I honestly, because of the position of the text on the picture, I thought I was going to say, open my eyes, seeing a pair of saucer-like tits <laughs> look, looking at me. <laughs> they belong to the perpetrator, a short girl who bumped into me and now has fallen down onto the hallway floor. Goodness. She wears a PE uniform and a very worried frown. The former strikes me as a rather strange thing to have on during a lunch break. More striking than that, though, is that she doesn't have legs. Yeah, that's pretty striking. Yeah. Or she does, but they are not flesh and bone. Her pale and very much flesh and bone thighs and then shins and feet made of some black metallic or plastic-like material. They look disturbingly artificial and unnatural. It almost makes me forget my chest is hurting. Probably got kicked. Yeah, bro. The girl winces a little, rubs her nose, and jumps up. Oh, man. Hey, are you all right? Whoa, those shorts Sorry, got extremely yeah. short. Well, you just couldn't tell how short they were because the legs were all tilted up. I suppose you're right. Really sorry. I wasn't looking where I was going. You just came out of nowhere. Sorry, sorry. Got the coy, mousy look. Twin tails, girl. Uh huh. Oh, man, this is the Lolita character. This is a freshie. You think so? I think so. He's looking really apologetic in the hurt puppy way of looking apologetic. I quickly forget about being angry or anything since hurt puppies are my weak spot. Wow. It's okay. Don't worry about it. Ouch. Ouch. Oh, no. Oh, no. I say that, but there's a stinging pain growing in my chest, and I know that this is about the biggest possible danger for my condition. Don't overexert yourself. Don't forget your medication. And most of all, don't get hit in the chest. Really? I try to rub my solar plexus to chase the pain away, holding my breath in an attempt to hear my heartbeat. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, dear. He touched the girl and now he's gonna die. It seems normal. Yeah, really. Hey, should I get a nurse? The worried, high-pitched voice of the girl snaps me out of it. I stare at her for a few seconds dumbfounded until I realize that I probably looked worse off than I really was, doubling over myself and looking all tense. Damn, I'm over-worried about my heart. Er, right, no need. I'm fine. Managing to say something in response, I pull myself upright, feeling my sore ribs one last time, then take a deep breath. She just knocked the wind out of me. Big time. There's nothing more than that. You sure you're okay? I hit you pretty hard. I cannot get over the shortness of those shorts. I know, they're really just panties. Yeah, really, though. It's okay, I said I was fine. Nothing's broken, no harm done. Fucking shit, look at your face. Get out of here. Yeah, he's like a douche now at this point. That's good! I was... I feel a hand on my shoulder at the same time the girl's eyes widened in horror, and I didn't... Eat. ...click that at all, I just switched. Wow. Wow. I don't have time to look behind me because Shizune is already shoving me aside and stomping over to the girl, signing furiously at her. Miss Abarzaki. Ibarazaki. Miss, Miss Abarzaki. Iba God damn it. Miss Ibarazaki. I saw that. Running in the halls is strictly forbidden. Not even. Why are you yelling at me? This is poorly <laughs> pained. This, they can't. Get yeah. out of here. Go, flies. Fuck. We, this is midsummer and independence, so the there are a shitload, shitload of flies everywhere. Yeah. The door is closed, there's a screen, though. Oh, I see. My door works, was just rigged. Misha translates right on Shizune's tail, but her voice is girlishly playful, not full of the divine fury Shizune's arm movements would seem to call for. Oh, sorry, I was just going to get some stuff, and I was kind of in a hurry. Shizune says, Blah! You've been told this a thousand times before. Your reckless behavior endangers other students, and even worse, it's explicitly against school regulations. What? It's... <laughs> let's, let's think about this here. Yep. Hurting people is not as bad as breaking school regulations. Yep. Oh, I think that speaks for itself. It does indeed. 
The girl blushes and starts to fidget nervously like a little child caught misbehaving. I'm telling you, this is the Lolita character. Well, they're trying to frame it that way, at least. It's so cute, I find myself smiling. I know that! I, um... I was just... Sorry. Make sure that this will not happen again, although I'm sure telling you this is futile. It only causes me further headache when you choose to ignore the regulations. Got that, Amy? 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 The small girl sticks her tongue out in response. Wow. Eh. Gotta go. Dietrich will have my head. I promised to help with printouts, but I went running instead. Sorry. I've got a change and everything. And runs. And runs. He's already bolted from where she was a second ago, almost halfway towards the stairwell. Izuna looks like she's about to go nuclear on the spot, so I smile at her in a vain attempt to calm her down. Yeah. Good sign. Are you okay, Hee-chan? That Ibarazaki girl is always like that, causing trouble to others. You know, I'm pretty sure Suzune wouldn't call me Hee-chan. Never mind, never mind. Wow. Yeah, anyway, I'm okay. I just got the wind knocked out of me. Yeah? That's great, Hee-chan. Glad I got the wind knocked That's out of you. That's great, Hee-chan. Look at that. I wouldn't call that great, but I... Yep. One of those. But I let it slide this <laughs> one time. <laughs> you gonna let it slide? Yep. <laughs> Oh, God, I say that in real life. <laughs> we have to run now. <laughs> <laughs> there was an important student council meeting regarding the festival, and we decided where to eat. Blair. Too bad you can't join, but this lunch meeting is only for council members. Oh, shit on. You can take it there some other time. Oh, but that'd be like a date, wouldn't it? Shit on even more. Ah, 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 my dick. The girls leave for downstairs. I didn't manage to get far from the third floor hallway before all this commotion struck. Literally. I should get going as well. The lunch in the afternoon class passed uneventfully. I read most of the book I started yesterday and eat some of the mostly inedible offerings of the cafeteria. The class is tiresome. The teacher seemed like an okay person despite the weird first impression I got, and the material was relatively interesting. However, the way he teaches is really bizarre. It's as if he expects that everyone is a natural genius. Of course, he probably is a natural genius. Yeah, so he expects everyone is. Of course. When the final bell sounds, I realize there is still a lot of time left in the day, and I really, I'm left wondering what to do. It's odd. At the hospital, I had 24 hours a day of free time, but here, filling the considerably shorter hours feels difficult, because I don't have to sit only in a bed. Yep. Everyone else leaves, and I'm left alone with the teacher. Muto is examining the assignment sheets we were working on earlier, marking them with a red ball pen. A ball pen. Red ball pen. One with the teacher. Yep. Raising at his eyes from his papers briefly, he notices me and furrows his brow. <laughs> Sexily furrows his brow. What is it, Nakai? I jump at him addressing me. But I guess it's natural to spark some conversation since there's nobody else around. Mm-hmm. Uh, nothing. Think about what I do after school. The teacher slowly puts the cap on the pen he is holding and arranges his papers into a stack, clacking it against the desk twice. Yep. Clack, clack. He seems very methodical, and for a brief moment I'm reminded of Shizune. But the teacher is more unhurried and relaxed, much more routine. You have no plans? Ugh! God damn! Smoking plus allergies. Yep. No, I consider joining a club, but I don't know what kind of club would interest me. Go observe a meeting of someone else's club. Might pique your interest. I guess. I just... I don't know how to continue from there. The arousal is making my heart beat. <laughs> exactly. Butel looks at me in a way that makes me quickly want to take the words back to avoid a conversation. Yep. But I can't, so I have to forge ahead. I just don't know how to deal with people. I mean, the other students. God damn. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Excuse me, why? I'm talking to people and everything, so it's not that I'd be isolated or anything. I just don't know what to think about the disability. It's just like I feel like I'm being important if I pay attention to them. It is weird to ignore. Damn the bottle, damn the bottle. Yep, yep. The teacher scratches his cheek absentmindedly, looking very unresponsive. How do you look unresponsive? Mm hmm. Never mind, I guess I can... You, yeah, whatever. Fuck it. I don't think it's well used. 
These things are only an issue if you make them. God damn, these people, the staff at this yep. school is like, you're an asshole, and the fact that you're thinking about yourself being an asshole makes you one. Yeah. You can talk normally with someone, even if they are blind or something. Try to look behind the superficial. There's not a single student here who isn't just a normal kid behind whatever they might seem at first glance. He says the same thing as Yuko did. Yep. I know they're right, but it's hard. How can you not consider, for example, Shizune's deafness when the only way to communicate with her is to talk through Misha? Or Hanako. It's not like you can even ignore her face. But... I'm interrupted by the door of the classroom suddenly slamming open. Yep. Teacher! Teacher! God damn it. <laughs> Misha crashes in hand straight and an enthusiastic greeting, her voice loudly and lively enough to wake the dead from their graves. She starts towards the teacher's desk with her bouncing step, hands energetically swinging with the rhythm. Muto, visibly dismayed by the interruption and Misha in general, slumps in his chair. Mikado. Da -da -da -da, something's wrong. Da -da -da -da, interrupting. Yeah, what up? We have talked about volume control before. <laughs> yes! We have. Yes, we have. But she doesn't lower her voice at all, and the teacher just rubs his eyes. So, what is it? Uh, we need help. We're running out of supplies for the festival stands. This is a stress. She waves a pink slip of paper she's holding around. So, get more supplies from the art room. What's the problem with that? Plywood. Plywood is always a problem. Last time we wanted more, and there was only a little. But that time, we just took it all and went with that. Now there's, like, none left there. So you know where there is some more? I don't understand. How would I know where the fuck plywood's at? Yeah. See, Chan, I mean, the president thought that a teacher would know if there was plywood. Was she wrong? Muto looks like he is in great pain, frowning with his entire essence, and Misha doesn't get it at all. Looking at the two of them communicate is terrible, like looking at a man being tortured by drilling his skull open while blasting pop music at full volume at the same time. <laughs> Well, I'm afraid I have no idea if there is any plywood in the school, let alone where it would be if there was any. Aw, what should I do? Perhaps try to find Mr. Nomiya? I'm quite sure he would know where to find everything you need. Shop teacher. This school doesn't come for, this doesn't cater to disabled students. It creates them. Absolutely. You'd have to pry them from his cold, dead hands, but that's a different matter. Ah, I don't have time. We're so busy. She holds her head with both of her hands, looking as despairing as is possible for a person like her. Without even noticing, she crumples the note she's holding against her hair. I shouldn't even be fetching these things. There's so much to do and we're falling behind the schedule. Muto looks at her grave and then suddenly smiles. Smiling doesn't really fit his face. I think it'd be better if he didn't. <laughs> okay. I wonder if you can get some temporary help. He switches to staring at me focusedly with a hard expression that's trying to say, Go make some friends. Yep. Uh, I guess I can give you a hand. You can? Thanks, Ichan. You are really nice. She pauses, does a double take, and then points at me with her finger, yelling, Ah! I'm looking very puzzled. Come to think of it, what's Ichan doing here? Class is over. You should be having fun. We just had a little chat. Oh, no. It's not the tension, is it? Are you in trouble, Ichan? No, I'm not. Is Ichan in trouble, teacher? No, he's not. <laughs> Muto sighs deeply, and I feel that I have to help Misha get off here, get off the teacher's back. So what do you need? Here's the list. I can try to find the plywood from somewhere if there's none in the art room. Showers me a note she's holding. I take it, hesitating a bit. I said I'd help you, but this has no implications on whether or not I'm joining the student council. Oh. Why is he such a bitch about joining the student council? It's just a matter of principle. I'll do what I want. It's there's two members, and they're the only two people you know in the whole school. You can't make me. Went hard to get. I suppose so. Still, thank you, John. Try to be quick. We're in a stall building streak now. We must hurry, hurry, hurry. She passes out of the classroom, moving me and the teacher looking at each other with something that feels like a silent agreement. Yep. Well, there you have it, Nakai. You have something to do now. Please don't sound so smug. Looking at the list with a number of items ranging from point to paint to plywood, that's not a very large alphabetical spread. All written with small, neat handwriting that is undoubtedly Shizune's. I heave a sigh. How we going, then? Waving the long whistle up at the teacher, I exit to the hallway. 
The classroom's closet and NARS are designated belonging to classes 3-1 and 3-2 on the right side and 3-4 on the left side, each door working exactly the same. Further down the corridor, still with identical floors, are rooms that I don't think were used for classes. I guess the art room is not a classroom as such. I carefully push open the furthest door and peek in. It's a classroom, but it seems rather badly kept or not in use. Am I in the right place? Desks and chairs are all around the room, and a thin layer of dust settles on them. There are some easels in the corner, so at least this looks like the right place. Has the classic art stools, even. Oh, yes. The least comfortable things in the world. I'd say so. The room is flush. Those are not pads, by the way. Those are pieces of, like, particle board. Yep. Strapped to metal with bolts. That uh, That is the chairs that you have to sit on in the woodshop classroom. Oh, of course. Yeah. Because they're indestructible. There are, yeah, there are no chairs in shop. You and just they have stack to, like a motherfucker. You have to sit at a workbench with about six other people. All operating power tools. Yeah. <laughs> well, in close proximity. To be fair, the pr- the power tools, the big ones are standalone. You well, have the to go table saws are not at the table, obviously, yeah. despite the name. But the power tools, yes, oftentimes worked on the same workbench as you trying to fill out a report or something like yeah. that. And so you're just getting like shitloads of fucking sawdust, sawdust like sprayed in your face and... as you're trying to write yeah <laughs> and the meanwhile sitting on the most uncomfortable seat in the entire universe I never set foot in the shop classroom really you never took shop nope dropped out wow specks of dust are dancing in the stagnant air making the beams of light almost visible jokingly I call into the empty room anybody hopes something catches my eye and stop and sentence again this uh-huh. cutting me off is trying for a dramatic effect uh- Ah. ah! No arms. Sitting on a desk is a short-haired girl, cautiously, curiously wearing a boy's uniform with a fork between her toes and a morsel of food stuck firmly on the end. The reason she's wearing a boy's uniform is because if she had to eat with her feet, she'd be fucking showing her cut off all day. True. This not way of dining seems to be caused by her apparent lack of hands, but her presence here is what makes me t- uh, takes me aback even more. How did I miss her before? She's sitting in a corner very still, but I remember somehow, I still somehow took her as part of the furnishing. Wow. Nice. Or a statue at first glance. I'm not being too observant today as a whole. The girl seems to be frozen in place, staring at me with her huge eyes like a rabbit in headlights. She's staring at me, her mouth wide open, ready to accept the fork. <laughs> All right. I'm staring at her, my mouth wide open, so I'm remembering I didn't finish my sentence and trying to think if I should. This weird stalemate keeps us both stunned in the silence, punctuated only by the wall clock ticking rhythmically. Hello! The girl stuffs the fork in her mouth and is now staring at me expectantly while chewing. It's a bit awkward. Um, hello. I was told to, told to pick up some supplies from here, for the, some festival stalls, I think. I didn't think there would be someone here. There isn't. That's why I came here, too. Picks up another fork full. Doesn't that mean you're here, then? She raises her eyebrows as if she was suspecting my observation was false. You are pretty observant. I guess it does. But who are you? This girl is pretty straightforward, isn't she? Now she can't really get too much yeah. of size with... Anyway. I'm Nakai. He's selling Nakai. I just transferred in on Monday. I'm Rin. Tezuka Rin. Rin Tezuka. I won't shake hands with you, but at least we know who we are now. <laughs> Shit on. That's very nice. Ah, that was all her, I guess. Her deadpan manner of talking makes it hard to determine whether she's joking about shaking hands or not. It kind of bothers me. Joking about these matters doesn't feel appropriate at all. Fuck you. Definitely appropriate. While I'm trying to figure out what's appropriate and whether this girl is, she seems to have lost interest in me is now gaining yearningly back at her food. Can I continue my lunch? If you don't mind, I won't mind you. If you need to get your stuff, the supplies are at the back. Go right ahead. But lunch? School's already over for the day. What word would you use then? There is no word for meal you eat after lunch before dinner, right? It's Dutch or Linner. I, I've always heard Linner. Second lunch. I don't know. Yeah. It bothers me very much, too, but I don't really know what I should say. I don't think you're supposed to eat a meal between lunch and dinner to begin with. Fuck yeah. you! But I'm hungry now. My delicious box lunch We go to waste otherwise. I have curry. It's very delicious. With much decisiveness, Ren once again picks up the fork between her toes and with at least as much impoliteness, she points it straight at me. So, Nakai, what brings you to this place? That's not really pointing at him. The same. Like I said, I was told to look for these things. No, the school. From outside, you look fine. Is your problem inside? I come to a full stop, loading my mouth but not getting a word out. I... I can guess. I'm good at guessing. Better than most people. This is the first person who's asked him about his disability. Yeah. This is the... I like this person. I, I do, too. I don't even give a shit. 
She but, doesn't care. Yeah. Well, she doesn't have arms. So how, yeah, how could she? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. He's new to this whole thing. Uh, there you go. Green cuts me off before I can answer a question or skirt around it somehow. I don't know which I would have done. By the way, that's when the fuckers here playing Katawa Shoujo again. Uh, still just me, Hesman, <laughs> and, uh, fat fucker here as I well. I don't think this needs that introduction. Though. I don't care. Just in case. Okay. I don't know how I'm doing this. Okay. Nobody's watching it anyway, so fuck them. Yeah. I froze in front of this issue again. I haven't even told anyone here about my condition, or maybe it's only because it hasn't really come up. I do get the feeling that not making issues this is a big part of the social code here, as the teacher said. I wonder if the people here can relate. Probably not anybody than any normal person could. I can't wait to Shizune in circumstances, or Louis either. Naturally, while I go through this in my head, Rin keeps considering what my condition could be with an overly contemplative look on her face. She puts her fork between her lips and leans back, looking at the ceiling as if the answer was written up there. A beam of light illuminates her face from the window side, creating a mask of dark shadow on the other side. I don't think it's anything in your head, and something in your guts would be boring, boring the ordinary, like this lunch of mine, and less delicious. Yeah. The problem must be in your pants. <laughs> this messed up Sherlock Holmes kind of statement and the sheer lack of tact it was delivered with catches me completely off guard. I think I might have reeled back even physically as Ren's eyes widened in revelation and astonishment. So I was right. There's something wrong with your tackle, isn't there? Still partially in shock from recognizing Dear the need Lord. to reply something, I spit out the first thing I could think of. No, nothing like that. I have a heart problem, arrhythmia. I said it. More like boarded it out, but I said it. <laughs> they go in front of me, purses their lips together, and glowers at me, looking very disappointed. Another, another word. Glowers. Not use that kind Glowers. How boring. Trouble in the pants would have been much more scandalous. <laughs> What's with this reaction? Sorry to let you down. <laughs> yeah, really. Just let you down. I forgive you. Just, I collect people, and a person with, you know, that kind of problem would have been really great. Collect people? people with different problems. Huh, seems like Dorai asked people what's wrong with them? Pretty much. I see. With a little to say, Ren resumes her lunch and the conversation dies anyway. Dies away. But I keep thinking about what was said. It's the first time I told anyone else about my condition. All the other people have either known about it already or heard about it from someone else. Or didn't need to know about it like every other student here so far. Should I have told her there's a natural part of introductions? Is it expected of me? Hi, I'm Misao. I have a very serious heart condition. <laughs> I was supposed to go around right using myself from now on. It's like AA. Yeah, really. Hi, I'm Misao Nakai, and I could die at any moment just from fucking standing up. I feel like that should be part of the initiation here. I mean, unless yeah, it's like... there's no hazing whatsoever. Unless it's like shockingly embarrassing, you know what I mean? Like, Hi, I'm Misao Nakai, and I have a micro penis. <laughs> As if our disabilities would define us. What a disgusting thought. Oh, now you get it. Yeah, really. When it relates to you, you understand. Yep. You don't want people fucking staring at your problems. Yeah. Hmm, what a <laughs> shocking revelation. Let's hear if he says it right now. Or maybe this Suzuki girl is just an unnatural interest in such things. I still ask. Even that, I, I, I would still ask. I would make a non-issue of it and just be like, hey, what the fuck's wrong with you? I would maybe, uh, I would, I would ask once I was familiar with the person. If it wasn't blatantly obvious, you know what I mean? Yeah. As I walk back to the back of the room, I would actually say, like, Hey, what's wrong? Why are you here? From this person yeah. with no arm, just to be fair. Yeah. Well... Hey, what's your problem? Yeah. Ah, I got bad eyes. Ah, yeah, okay, well... <laughs> I just have my hands tucked in my shirt. These aren't boobs. See, I'm actually a guy with my elbows tucked in my shirt. Yes. A chance how, does she, how does she tie her tie? With her feet? I'd probably a clip on. Okay, I can see it. But that's all I me mean, could tie. I've seen people tie ties. My mom, my mother actually went to school with a girl who uh, had no arms and ate with her feet, such as this. Person. Yeah, no, I went to school with a guy like that too. Really? Yeah. Never mm -hmm. talked to him. Always saw in the library sometimes. We tied with his feet. Really? Yeah, pretty quickly too. Whoa. He was a he was boss at it. That's ridiculously yeah, awesome. Kind of actually. It, it's it's crazy to watch. I wonder. I wonder if. You, with enough training, could pretty much do, like, everything with your feet that you would do with your hands. I don't know about everything. Yeah, I mean, you're not going to... You're not I mean, gonna, you couldn't like, really, like, pick something up and carry it, but, like, other than that... I've seen people with no arms play the guitar with their feet, though. Yeah, that's outrageous. Which is real, I mean, as a guitar player who has fingers and hands, and all of their fingers, 
It is extremely outrageous. Yeah. As a person who, like, tried to play guitar and can't, with my hands having that advantage, can't. Just, wow. Should probably play with your feet. Should I? Maybe. Yeah, that's my calling. <laughs> Maybe that's your calling. It allows you to play piano with your hands. Yeah, I could kick ass. Yeah. Play like a steel slide guitar way down the Ooh. floor. Rhythm with your feet, lead with your hands. Yeah. Ooh. Her hair is, and I can sing at the same time. One man band. One man band. Her hair is a burnt auburn, almost orange, and cropped short. Long hair would probably be impossible with no arms. Yep. The boys' uniform and the lack of arms make her look very thin, almost scrawny. She is not particularly pretty, except for her murky green eyes, which flicker restlessly from below her short bangs, even when she eats. I think she's pretty cute. She looks like the main character from, uh, Eureka 7. I don't know what Eureka 7 is. Okay, well, Renton. Anyway. Okay. Looks like a guy. Fetishes. The distance and shadows make it seem like they don't reflect sunlight at all, and instead absorb all within, you know, like, deep well. She moves her feet almost as deftly as a normal person would use their arms. However, I can see how this discomfort people, especially while eating, it makes me feel a little bit uncomfortable. At least this is because you have the false idea that feet are dirty. Yeah. Well, they are. Well, they can't be. Yeah, they can't be. This place, remember, is a hospital school. That's true. So they're just chemical covering. <laughs> I hesitate to think about what the word unnatural, but it's too late now, isn't it? As you said, yeah. thinking about how you're an asshole makes you an asshole. Exactly. I keep searching the cabins. The cabins? Canadians. Yep. And shelves for Misha's things, but after enough time passes and silence grows too uncomfortable, so I, so I try to force some comfort. I cannot fucking read what this shit right now. Let's try this again. Take two. The steel reserve really cuts down on the. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, reading aloud ability. I keep searching the cabins and shelves for Misha's things, but after enough time passes, the silence grows too uncomfortable, so I try to force some conversation out of this strange girl. So, do you always eat alone in this weight, or do you get the occasional visitor? <laughs> Visitors? Maybe you are my first occasional visitor, but I don't always eat alone either. Sometimes eat with a certain person on the roof, if she's not horsing around. Yep. Horsing? Horsing. She likes to do sports. Ah. Water sports. <laughs> Both of us fall silent again as Ren forks the last bit of her meal to her mouth. I look down at my hall and double check with Misha's list. It seems I have everything except plywood. Um, so I think I have all the things now. That's very nice for you. Don't feel ob don't feel obliged to stay. I was about to take a nap anyway. You need to do whatever you are going to do with that stuff anyway, right? Or perhaps you like to watch girls sleeping. <laughs> I'm not sure what to make of this, but Rand looks serious. Even if I did, I think I have to be going. I'll, I'll catch you around, Tezuka. You can call me Rin. I feel that our relationship is at this point good enough to warrant this much. Okay. Yeah, cool. I was already trying to make my exit, but she draws me back in. Fine, then. I'm Hisao. Then you are. I like her. I like this. I see why she's the poster child. This is the greatest mm -hmm. character so far. Although I am really interested in that also that, uh, I don't know, Scar Girl. Uh, Hock Scar Girl. Hakano or Hanako. I don't know. Timidness. Timid it's, a, it's attractive to me. Is it? Yeah. I'm, I fall for these characters every game. My, right. heart, my heart breaks as I play each one of these. <laughs> <laughs> Rin looks at me hard in the eyes, but that intimidating feeling you get when someone stares at you isn't there. It's like she's actually not looking at me at all. She blinks a couple of times, and I can't figure out why a pause like this just popped up between us out of nowhere. See you later, Hisao. There is something like a tiny smile on her face. Maybe. There it is. You can see it, right? Maybe. Yeah. Very tiny. Maybe. Tiny smile. Nice sound effects. Yeah. I quietly back out of the room. As I shut the door in front of my face, I whisper to myself, What an intriguing person. From inside, I hear a muffled sing-song voice. I heard that! Yep. Oh, slam. What did she hear? I jump at the sudden appearance of Misha, who I had not heard approaching despite the completely empty hallway. Somehow she had gotten to jumping distance from me without making a sound. Creepy. It briefly reminds me of Kenji's nutty theory about a global feminist conspiracy, but I pushed that thought aside. Shizune, standing solid behind Misha, looks aloof as she couldn't have heard the remark that drew Misha's attention. But Misha is visibly excited. <laughs> no, wait. More importantly, who is in there? There's no club meetings today. Except for student council, apparently. She tries to curiously peek past me, even though the door prevents her from seeing anyway. What are you doing here? It took so long we had to come check what's wrong. 
That's no good, Hee-chan. She wags her finger at me scoldingly. I found Plowa, but everything else is still missing because you are tardy. Wow. Oh, sorry, er, I got the things here. I was just going to bring them. I think you're up to some mischief, Hee-chan. Who was in there with you? I wonder. Misha signed something quickly to Shizune, pointing at her own ear a couple of times. Shizune immediately pushes her way past me and opens the door into the classroom I just left. I can only imagine the shock she's experiencing. But Shizune's diligence and attitude, the insolence of daring to deface school property by sleeping on top of it must be too much to bear. <laughs> and indeed, she stares at Rin, frozen in place apart from the slight but noticeable trembling of her shoulders from suppressed rage, I'm sure. Yep. Instead of blowing up, Shizune takes just a few deep breaths, adjusts her glasses, and slams the door shut, turning to sign furiously at Misha. Maybe she did blow up, but I can't understand it. She shoots a very loaded stare at me, too, as if it was somehow my fault that Rennie's sleeping on one of the tables. Yep. Oh, she's not getting any funny ideas about the reason of my tardiness. Yep. Hello. Rennie's voice comes from the other side of the door, and it takes a few eye blinks to realize she might have trouble opening it. I open the door uh -oh. to find Rin to wipe me behind it, looking at us with half interested, half sleepy face. Hello? Yeah. Miss Tezuka, what do you think you were doing? You absolutely are not permitted to use school property for such uh, disgraceful activity. It sure is suddenly very crowded in here. I didn't know I was this popular. Yes, you are. It's hard to say whether she's happy or unhappy about this turn of events. At any rate, she ignores Shizune and Misha's scolding, so they have no choice but to drop the issue. Shizune taps Misha's soldier, points at Ren, and makes some quick signs. Bleh! Popularity aside, please don't do that anymore. Bleh! Popularity. Anyway, how is your project going? Well, with you, I didn't know I was that popular. Da, 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 oh, okay. Popular and relative, anyway. Will it be done for the festival? Ren looks at them blankly, apparently that's at ease under the pressure Shizune's cold stare is putting on her. I keep wondering about that myself, too. Yep. Bleh! And we'll think about it harder. <laughs> yep. <laughs> As Misha signs her reply to Shizune, her face turns into an unsatisfied frown. <laughs> Miss Tezuka, please try to take this seriously. It'll be a disaster if the wall looks like someone threw up their launch onto it. Ren nods assertively. We'll think more seriously. Yep. Misha actually giggles at that, but Shizune doesn't, not even after translation. <laughs> that dude, that's great. Hilarious. She just shakes her head, takes the materials from me, and takes off with Misha in tow. Ren frowns thoughtfully as she looks at the retreating student council duo. How rude. How rude. It's true, though, I must finish my project before the weekend. There will be dire consequences if I don't. The end of the world as we know it. Yep. Like weekends usually are, but more dire. Yep. Much more dire. Maybe I'll postpone my nap. To unforeseen future. I'm about to ask what product she has and what are these apocalyptic consequences, but she walks back into the art classroom. Since you have nothing to do, would you give me a hand? This paint can doesn't fit into my bag, but I need it. She kicks lightly at a, can a huge can of paint that's lying on the floor next to the table she was sitting and sleeping on. Oh, that's had a dull clang. No sound? Okay. Yep. Being the gentleman I am, I naturally pick it up. Heavy. Yeah, sure. When you need to take it. Away. And with that, she takes off to the hallway, and me, the paint can flying, since there's little choice for either of us. The hallway is quiet and empty now, with Shizune and Misha gone, so we two leave towards the stairwell at the other end. Every ten or fifteen, every ten or fifteen or twenty steps, I have to change the can from one hand to another because the thin handle cuts in my palm. At least it keeps my arms from tiring too fast. You gotta hold it cross arm style on your stomach like this. True. It's like boom. Yeah, that handle was ridiculous. Yeah, it's terrible. Why would they ever, ever yeah. It's used, It's only for pouring. Yeah, I You don't even need so. it then. Rin strolls on beside me with an uneven pace that I have trouble matching. Or maybe I am walking weird because of the extra weight. Daddy. Yeah. It seems one of us is constantly walking too slow or too fast, and I can't figure out which. Two flights of stairs below, a trouble appears in the form of the head nurse in this fox-like grin. Ah, Mr. Nagai, what a happy coincidence. There's Luka too, of course. He nods courteously to Rin, who does not acknowledge him back, then turns to me because obviously it's me who had some business with. There is something I forgot to mention on Monday. I nod and wait impassively me because I can't even begin to guess what he forgot. The feeling of the handle delving deeper into my skin doesn't make me feel enthusiastic about this interruption either. 
Think about your medications. If you haven't been on that, been that long in your current medications, there might be some unexpected side effects, which might require adjusting dosages or even changing to another kind of medication. So we would do a few tests regularly, but what I'd want for you to keep is an eye on everything in your condition that feels off. You get what I mean? Nausea, headache, anything. You come see me if something happens. All right. So how are you? Everything fine? I go up and drop the candle floor before answering it. Apparently this takes longer than my biceps can handle. I'm about to say something generic as nasty, but then I realize how often I've done that lately. Other people have asked me that too. Teachers and students here. My parents, visitors, nurses, doctors, and Maybe you're just a boring person. You probably are. <laughs> really, though. Everything cool? Uh, yeah, you know, it's all right. Yeah. I'm doing all right. Yeah, I've been better, been worse, whatever. Every day of your life. Yep. Except this school. This is a small school, and both the student base and the faculty seem to be very tightly knit. Like an Afghan. Mm -hmm. At least there's the feeling. At least that's the feeling I'm getting. And this is not the kind of school that gets transfer students too often. The thought sends shivers up my spine, but I give a generic answer anyway. The generic answer was just blah, 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 blah. Yeah, really. Okay. That's great. Also, one other thing. My sources tell me that you've been at neither the school track nor even the pool, so I can know if you've been taking up exercising as I asked. Of course I haven't, but this way of inquiring gives me the feeling that I should have been running my ass off on the track since the very first day. <laughs> yep. You have people spying on me? Not as such, I just happen to know a few people. But that's not the issue here, so don't try to slip out of it. Oh, wow. Well, I was actually just doing some improvised weightlifting as an exercise. I pick up and lift the can up and down a few times like some sad imitation of a bodybuilder, even though it's weighing down on my arms painfully. The stupid thing disappears from it. Grin disappears from his face for a second, then comes back out and was never gone. Tezuka, would you give us a second? The nurse grabs him by the shoulder without waiting for Ren's permission, which he didn't need in the first place, and drags me aside. Wow. When I told you to exercise, I wasn't joking. Wow. I understand that you are still in your first week and all, but please don't ignore the importance of this. The reason I'm coming down this hard on you, down this hard on you is that habits are not easy to form. The more you slip and postpone, the harder they'll be. It's the same with everything, like dieting. Can you promise me to be more serious about this from now on? I don't want to die. So, yeah, I suppose so. Yeah, I promise. Definitely. Especially because he was talking about how bored he was. Yeah, really. Okay. It's more like it. If you go to the school track tomorrow morning, you'll meet my spy, who probably has no qualms offering consultation to you if you want to jog a bit. It's that bitch! They it's the one the that knocked him down. Huh. Consultation? See you around. He leaves with a wave of his hand and no answer, and I, w I walk to Ren, who has been wa waiting, idly waiting against the hallway wall and staring at the people, pale lighting fixtures in the ceiling. Yep. Even when I approach, she doesn't move her eyes off them. Are you getting medications for your heart thingy? Were you listening? It comes out more accusatory than I intend, accidentally lashing out at her. But even so, I don't really want to start talking about it. I just met her. I don't know her. It's not her business. But well, uh, she seems to be happily ignorant. Yeah. Go on. I was about to say, the heart problem thing is not the end of the world. Yeah, really. I suppose this is high school and everyone's concerned about their image. But... It looks fun. Yeah, really. I, but, well, the, the meta image. The yeah. heart condition is like one of the least worrisome disabilities that people at this school have. Yeah, it's got to be a star. Yeah, if anything, he'd be the, the star Super popular beta. dude at the Could be. small high school. He's a beta. True. And not the aggressive beta fish kind. I mean like the beta wolf. Yeah. Like the beta runt. I don't know. Really. Talking about shit in public. But it's not Ren's fault, is it? It definitely is. The topics she chooses to bring up are definitely her fault. Don't try to beat it on fucking circumstances or something. I look up at her, suddenly feeling a bit guilty, but Ren is just staring past my shoulder quizzically, her head tilted like a bird's. Sigh. <laughs> I don't know why this is so hard for me. It feels like there is some inexplicable lot that prevents me from being more upfront about this. Yeah, they're for my hearts. Will they make you better? No, not really. They just make me a little less worse. Alright, Ren keeps looking at me for a while longer, and she neither says anything nor further, nor displays any kind of emotion I can discern. I'm thankful that she doesn't. I think I'm still not quite used to all this. At the hospital, it was easy, but I still haven't sorted out my feelings about having to live a normal life with this disability. Yep. We leave the main building, and Rin leads us onwards towards the dorm. Oh, we're getting into a room. Ooh. We stop at the small patch of greenery in front of the dorm building with some very interesting graffiti choices. Yeah, really. 
The dome is built on a slightly elevated ground with a wall and a few trees that everyone has to circle around every time they come and go. It's probably the only inconvenient sign the school designs exclusively for people in wheelchairs. Yep. The entire wall, even though there's stairs. Yep. Which means you could probably circumvent that shit. Anyway, the entire wall made of the same kind of bricks as the building itself have been covered with some sort of painting. Wow. Can't mention anything. Yeah, I'm just realizing some of the stuff that is painted in here. And uh, really, again, going into an existential questioning of my life. <laughs> so carry on. Yep. There are human faces and legs and hands. I can't quite say what the painting as a whole might portray. Stacks of what seem to be giant paint cans are arranged in piles on the ground beside the wall. This has got to be the project. Oh, I hope so. See, the left side is hardly off the ground yet. It's because I couldn't get in the mood yesterday, so I gave up and went to meditate instead. Then it was suddenly morning. <laughs> I have to work on it, but the guys from our class are oh. fucking... I keep accidentally right-clicking. Negative spaces and base services whenever, which is a problem. It's easier to paint big areas if there are a lot of people with hands. The reach is better, and it's faster, too. He goes on the tangent of a tangent, waving a little with her arm, or whatever event there actually is, to demonstrate even though I got the point already. Yep. The white cotton of her sleeve flaps around, and it makes me think it, would, it could look sadder than it does. Wow. But it makes me feel out of place, like almost every tangible reminder of the student base's special properties has in the past few days. The girl doesn't notice my drooly feelings, of course, or the fact that she lost me a while ago already, and just keeps on blabbering. So that's when I'm trying to figure out if there is something I need to figure out, and then figure that out before it's too late and all hope is lost. Yep. Okay. Why would the hope be lost? Because pain has to be pain, then it has to dry, then it has to be painted over with another kind of pain. Wow. It takes time. She finally stops apparently thinking she made some kind of a statement that makes sense. I think it's best to start from the top. So, this is your project? You did this? Yes. Yes. All of it? Yes. Nice. But, I stumble with my words, suddenly feeling I've walked straight into the minefield of political incorrectness. Yep. It's okay, you can say it. I probably won't get mad. <laughs> I've watched really hard. I don't know what would be the right thing to say, if any. It feels like I'm way more sensitive than Ren is, though. This is really awkward. Don't you want to ask? How do you paint without hands? <laughs> yep. See, I'm an easy person to talk to, right? My feet. Pleased. Wow. I almost guessed that already, but isn't that hard to do? You're good at guessing. Anyway, I don't think it is, but maybe I'm used to it by now. I can't get my mind around the fact that she could be an artist, but seeing how adept she was at using her feet to eat, I figure painting might not be a problem either. Neither of us has anything more to add to the subject. The afternoon light works pretty well. I was afraid it would look too flat, but it's not like that after all. I think it's actually pretty interesting. I wanted to see what it looks like in dim light. You think it's flat? Eh, well, paintings tend to be flat. Yep. Not like that flat, you know, flat, like some people are, like no substance, no meat where there should be some. I know a few girls who, okay, I get it, but I couldn't really tell, I'm not that good with my art. I can't name any artists or artistic terms, so I don't really have anything to say. Ren shrugs your shoulders without saying suit yourself, without saying it, and looks up at the skies and trying to look for something up there. I didn't think I'd get any actual work done, but if you give me a hand with the paints, I can do a little before it's too dark. I wanted to get a halogen lamp like the ones they have at the sports track, but there aren't any. Renshire is quick to recruit my help, as with Shizune. It really makes me feel that the festival is such a big product that every pair of hands is needed. Why not? Well, so you're not the only, sure like, real able-bodied one, though, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> well, fucking Shizune could do it, or Misha, or Scarface, or... I suppose you're right. I know her name is Hanako. It's just so much better than Scarface. any other name. Pink-haired bitch, or deaf bitch, or yeah. scar-faced bitch. Yeah, we have torso girl. Yeah, really. And, <laughs> <laughs> and metal legs over there. Yeah, really. Cyber, Cybertron. Yeah. <laughs> Dale Gribble as well. Yeah, really. And then we have uh, bitch, I guess. It's just the guy's name. Yeah, really. Just Captain Heart Fag. <laughs> yeah, Heart Failure Captain Fag. Captain Beefheart, if you yeah. prefer old musical artists. Beta protagonist. Yes. Beta Max. Beta Max. There we go. Do you have motor control problems like, you know, those people who have some? Do you have problems like those people who have problems? <laughs> yes.
Yes. Are you're you black perfect. like those people who are black? Cerebral palsy, maybe? Not that I know of. I get it. Hard thing has nothing to do with that. It gives me a sly look for no reason. No, it doesn't. Let's do it then. So she sits on an empty wooden box and very naturally picks up a wide brush between the toes of her bare right foot. I open a few of the cans and pour some of the contents into shallow bowls for mixing. The thick paints flow lazily from the can to the bowl, like syrup. I mix them, creating funny, hypnotic-looking swirl patterns that melt quickly to each other that form a new monotone hue. Ren sets to work, every now and then asking for a hand with something or the other. Finding different brushes is easy enough, mixing the paints to be the exact tone this girl is apparently seeing in her head is a frustrating ordeal. I would assume so. She wants precision, precision down to the last millimeter before she is satisfied, but her instructions are obscure at best. Add half a splash of green. I crash in to pick up the can of bright green. The other green, this green. I carefully pour some of the other green paint in the mixing bowl. No, that's almost a whole splash, more white. What? Is green a good color to add? No idea, you're the artist here. A hint of smile appears in the corners of her mouth. Do you lack an opinion? No, it's just that I have no idea. <laughs> it's okay, because I got an idea. Add more white. That's not good, it has to be like, like the color when you wake up and you know that you saw the meaning of white from your dream, but can't remember it. Wow. Maybe it's yellow. Despite the impossibility of mixing color like the change of the seasons or any other nonsense that's being imposed to me, I find myself enjoying it more than I thought I would. Thus is the artist's struggle. Yeah. Ha trying to convey an idea through a medium. Of color. Well, of color or and really shape anything. And movement. Or sound, for that matter. Yeah. That's well, a well, different no, one. No, art's not sound. So art's not sound? You wouldn't no. consider music art? Nope, just classical painting. All right, well, you know. I'm 2D all the way. I'm fucking kidding. 2D I'm, all the way. 2D kidding. all the way. Do you like the 2DS that Nintendo made recently? I bet you do. I love it. It's my favorite thing. Uh huh. It's like 66% better than the 3DS. I'd say so. I spend the moments I have between mixing paint scribes down the pavement and just looking at it work. It's dope. I feel slightly intrusive at first, like breaking some imaginary intimacy, but Ren doesn't seem to mind the least bit. Maybe it's just in my head. Oh, you know, the artist said, don't look where I'm working, it's not finished. Exactly. It's not finished. It's not a process. Her entire presence emits completely different areas. She patiently works the details, adding layers of paint on top of other layers of paint, steadily moving her foot across the wall to add new shapes. When I manage to produce a passable mixture of paint, the rare smile on her face is oddly rewarding. Apart from the few words when discussing paint mixes, neither of us says a word for the longest time. And even though short discussions soon devolve into shorthand, both of us developing and using weird impromptu code words for various paints and hues, as if there was some need to conserve words and breath and sound. Fade. Oh, work's getting done. We stay there late into the evening until it becomes too dark to paint properly. So we paint improperly. Yep. And yep, it, it turns completely black. Da 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 Suddenly da da my da left da, hand da, hurts. da 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 Yes, it's God, another chapter. Maybe another chapter? Looks like it. I think so. Oh. Yep. All right, we're opening our eyes here. Yeah, I think that that may be the end yep. point for this part. All right. The sound of the Lord is pulling out of a fitful slumber and into the un unpleasant state of wakefulness. Oh, yes, I'm Away familiar with that. Away from this video. Bye, everybody. Slightly so.